All right, joining us now live, he was with his father uh, for most of the day, as I understand it today. Eric Trump is with us. Eric, uh, you were with your dad as this was unfolding? I was, Sean. In fact, I was the guy that got the call this morning, and I called my father let him know that it happened. So I was involved in this all day. And, you know, welcome to politics in, you know, in the, in the you know, 2000s. Um, Sean, my father never got so much as a speeding ticket in his life, you know, until he made one decision, and that's to go down the escalators of Mar-a-Lago and spend a lot of money and go and actually fight for this country for the first time. And he did a better job than anybody has ever done. And they started coming after him. The Washington Post, the day he won, 2016, the day he won, November 8th, that night they wrote an article. This is when impeachment begins. He wasn't president. He hadn't been elected for, less, you know, for five minutes at that point. And they start, this is when impeachment begins. And then he's impeached the first time. And then he was impeached the second time. And they slandered him. They belittled him. You know, they went after him. They went after all of us. There's no family in American history that has taken more arrows in the back than the Trump family every single time. And you know what? It's gone on past politics. You look at the attorney generals. You look at district attorneys all over the country. All they want to do is they want to get Donald Trump. They raise money on it. They send fundraising emails about it. They brag on camera about it. They go after him. They subpoena him. I'm probably the most subpoenaed person in the history of the United States. Every single day we get another subpoena. And they do it for one reason, because they don't want Donald Trump to run and win again in 2024. And, Sean, that's what this is about today, to have 30 FBI agents, actually more than that, descend on Mar-a-Lago, give absolutely, you know, no notice, go through the gates, start ransacking an office, ransacking a closet. You know, they broke into a safe. He didn't even have anything in the safe. I mean, give me a break. And this is coming from what, the National Archives? Yet, you know, Hunter Biden, he's a firearms crimes, uh, prostitution, illegal drugs, um, you know, shady deals with everybody around the world. And by the way, it's all on his laptop for the whole world to see in his own writing, in his own words, cooperated by everybody. Where, where are these FBI agents? Where where is everybody? Why is it that the arrows only fly at Donald Trump and his family? Why is it that the political persecution only goes one way in this country? Let's talk a little bit about what you were being told. What was the purpose for this raid? Sean, the purpose for the raid, from what they said, was because the National Archives wanted to, you know, cooperate uh, whether or not Donald Trump had any documents in his possession. And, and my father has worked so collaboratively with them for months. In fact, the lawyer uh, that's been working on this was totally shocked because I had such an amazing relationship with these people. And all of a sudden, on no notice, they sent, you know, 20 cars and, and 30 agents. Sean, I mean, this, this is just more political persecution of Donald J. Trump. They see Biden. Well, let, me, let me go He's through this, though, in a little detail. Single, please. But, but, because I'm assuming, all right, so your father is, is packing. He's leaving the White House. I don't know. I'm guessing that you, your dad probably didn't pack a single box. I'm just guessing you would know better than I. You can tell me if he did or if he didn't. Uh, all these boxes, all this, all your personal items get brought down to Mar-a-Lago. There's a question about whether there might be classified information that had been written about a long time ago. Let's walk through the process. So Mar-a-Lago, the people that work for your dad, were working with the National Archives to go through the material to make sure if there was anything mistakenly taken that it was going to be returned. And you were working collaboratively collaboratively on that. Is that correct? So when the president moves out of the White House, you have effectively, you know, six hours to move out of the White House. It's, it's effectively inauguration time where one president gets moved out and one president gets moved in, right? That's how the whole system works, as, as you know better than anybody. My father always kept clippings, um, you know, press clippings. He would have, you know, newspaper articles, pictures, notes from us. Uh, when my mom passed away a couple weeks ago, you know, he still had all the the notes, uh, you know, over the years had been saved, all the notes that she had ever written him. I mean, it's a beautiful thing. My father saves clippings and things like that. So he had, he had boxes, right, when he moved out of the White House. And he was very collaborative. If you want to search for anything, if you think anything, like, you know, come right ahead. I mean, it was, it was an open-door policy. And all of a sudden, 30 agents descend upon Mar-a-Lago. Sean, this didn't come from the little local FBI field office in, uh, in Palm Beach, Florida. You know who this came from. This came from one place and one building, and, and that is the White House in Washington, D.C. They want to attack a guy who they view as his greatest threat, is Biden's greatest threat. And that's exactly what Donald J. Trump is, because you know what? He had an incredibly strong country. People realized he was an effective president, 
And you see Biden right now. I mean, Taiwan is getting circled by military planes literally as we sit here and speak right now. You've got you know, Russia, Ukraine, which is a total disaster. You've got everything that's happening in Iran, which is a disaster. You've got inflation. You've got gas prices. All the things that you talk about all night. We're not respected by anybody around the world. Our economy is, is garbage, you know? And they worry that Donald Trump will come back in and win this very easily. They also worry about the 2022 midterms, which is the only reason they're doing the sham January 6th panel that does not have a single Republican on it. I mean, other than Liz Cheney, who's about to lose her race by 25 points, right? It's more political persecution of Donald J. Trump. They can't stand that Americans love him. I mean, even as I watch so, the channel right now, they keep on showing these beautiful clips of, of people, you know, waving Trump flags outside of Mar-a-Lago, his supporters. When has that ever happened in a political movement in the United States before? You know, you think back to the, the Russia hoax, the Russia witch hunt, the conspiracy theory. It went on for three long years. Eric, you know, I covered it every single night. And we ended up being vindicated on every single solitary thing that was reported on this show with our, our full ensemble cast. You know, Ari Fleischer tweeted out, all I can say is the FBI better have a slam dunk criminal case. Otherwise, the Biden administration and the DOJ have crossed a line of no return. What could they possibly think existed inside of Mar-a-Lago in a box that was taken from the White House that, it, that was so damaging that the FBI director and the attorney general of the United States would, would have to raid a former president's residence uh, and grab everything out of there? Because that doesn't make sense. What, 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 could pop, what, what secret document could possibly rise to that level? Yeah. I don't know. They'll probably find a note from me telling him how proud I am of him and what a great job he was doing as president. They might find some pictures of my kids, maybe some nice, you know, headlines, uh, maybe a nice note from you, Sean. Um, it's insane. How many times can you cry wolf? I mean, the FBI dragged this whole country through hell for three years based on lies and deceit and dirty dossiers and FISA warrants and everything else, right? And everything proved to be incorrect, fraudulent made up an absolute sham. They dragged this country through hell. And here they are again, raiding the guy's house. I mean, when, when do you give up? When do you say enough's enough? When do you give a human being, you know, who fought so hard for this country, when do you give them the benefit of the doubt? It's got to stop, Sean. I mean, this well, is I third mean, world we do have banana republic stuff. All right, so Hillary Clinton deletes the 33,000 emails. She comes up with the r dirty Russian dossier. That dossier is disseminated to the press, the media mob, or the willing accomplices. They disseminate false information in the lead up to the 2016 election. Uh, nothing happens to her, nothing happens to the media. They don't even apologize or correct the record at any particular point. Uh, th then, of course, that information, unverified, is used to spy on Carter Page and backdoor into the Trump campaign transition team and presidency. Nobody gets held accountable for that. You, if, if you or your brother Don Jr., if God forbid, you lied on a gun application, I doubt you'd be on this program tonight. You'd be serving time in jail. Or you have process crimes. Peter no Navarro was being charged with a misdemeanor. That usually means you call the lawyer and say, have your client report at this time, at this place, or we will secure a warrant for that person's arrest. Same with a process crime with Manafort, or same with Roger Stone. Sure. I mean, th these, were, th th these are not violent criminals that deserve pre-dawn raids with guns in their face, and then, of course, tipped off CNN cameras. And America tonight is asking, do we have equal justice and application of our laws in this country? Because after the way they treated we your don't. father with the Russian hoax, after, you know, again, if they better have a good reason for this. And here's another thing. Were the lawyers allowed to follow the FBI through Mar-a-Lago today as they were looking everywhere? Did anyone watch no, them? No, the answer is lawyers weren't allowed. They weren't allowed to be anywhere within sight. It's horrible. That's got to be a violation right there. They weren't allowed to be anywhere in sight. And going back to Hillary, there's a whole lot of other things. How about the Benghazi scandals? How about the Clinton Foundation? I mean, how many, you know, shady oligarchs from Russia were contributing to that? Look about, how about Uranium One? You want to talk about, you know, scandals that were never investigated, never vetted? You know, it's, it's the rules for thee and not for me, right? That's the old, you know, it, it, Sean, this has been happening since day one. They cannot stand that a guy named Donald Trump, who was a real estate developer, who built tremendous wealth and, and fame, was able to go into a political system in the U.S. 
and take out a person like Hillary Clinton and beat them at their own game and then go into Washington, D.C. and do a phenomenal job and not play by the rules and end up becoming one of the best presidents this country has ever had. And then they put in one of their own and the guy turns out to be an absolute flop. He does a terrible, terrible job and the country is going to hell under his leadership. And then now all of a sudden they realize that his son's in trouble and that he's in trouble and their political party's in trouble and that Donald Trump is poised if he wanted it. If he decided to hop back on that stage and wanted it, they know he's poised to win. And guess what? That threatens them. That threatens who they are. And they will do anything they can to take him out, to take me out, to take Don out, to take Ivanka out, to take our family out. They do it every single day. They do it at a state level. They do it at a federal level. The FBI does it. They subpoena us. They make our lives hell, Sean, every single day because they are threatened by Donald J. Trump. And honestly, I hope... And I'm saying this for the first time. I hope he goes out and beats these guys again, because honestly, this country can't survive this nonsense. It can't. This is not who we are. This is who Venezuela is, Sean. This is banana republic antics, having a home of the 45th president in the United States raided by FBI agents, safe, broken open. This is not who we are as a democracy. Imagine if that happened to, to Barack Obama. The, the world would be in an uproar. Well, uh, Eric Trump, um, I don't know. I think Ari Fleisch is right. Um, if you watch what they've done over the, the years, they don't get the benefit of the doubt anymore because they lied and they tried to take your father out for three years and they used a dirty Hillary dossier to do it. They spied on him illegally. Nobody was held accountable. She wasn't held accountable. No raid of Hunter's house. They've had the laptop longer than anybody. Director Ray, oh, I don't know anything about the laptop. And we certainly have a politicized Department of Justice. There's no doubt about it. Eric Trump, thank you for being with us tonight. No we appreciate it. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.